Hi, I'm Prof L and welcome to Chemistry Matters. And today we are going to be doing a limiting reagent problem. If you haven't seen uh, the previous video uh, on this particular subject, it might be a good idea to maybe pop back and have a look at that one for the basic concepts. So meantime, we will, I guess, dive right into it and we're going to look now at a reaction between ammonia and oxygen, five oxygens, and they react to give four NOs and six waters. So our question for today is that if we start off with 10.0 grams of ammonia and 20.0 grams of oxygen, uh, how much NO and how much water are we going to be able to get out of this? Plus, because it's a limiting reagent problem, one of these guys is going to be left over. So we want to know which one and how much of that particular one. So those are the questions that we are going to be answering today. So again, uh, if you've watched any other of these stoichiometry videos, you will notice that I'm very big on the fact that once you're given a mass, you can get an amount. As long as you know a chemical formula, you can get an amount, a number of moles. So if you're stuck right at the beginning of any stoichiometry problem and don't know what to do, look at the data you've been given. Uh, if you've been given a mass of anything, begin, for goodness sake, by calculating an amount, a number of moles. Even if you can't get any further, you're at least going to get a mark for doing that. Right, so we've got 10 grams of ammonia, we've got 20 grams of oxygen. The first thing that we're going to do is do our calculations of amounts of both of these things here. So number of moles of ammonia is going to equal the mass divided by the molar mass of ammonia and in this case the mass of ammonia that we've got 10.0 grams molar mass of ammonia is equal to 14.01 uh, molar mass of nitrogen plus 3 times 1.008 molar mass of hydrogen grams per mole and that is going to give us 0 0.587 mole of ammonia. That's what we're starting off with. And we do exactly the same thing for oxygen now. So the number of moles of oxygen, same equation, mass over molar mass. And that now is 20.0 grams divided by the molar mass of oxygen. Remember, it's an oxygen molecule. So we've got two times 16.00 grams per mole for oxygen, and that is going to give us 0 0.625 mole of oxygen, okay? So let's just label these, just so we remember which ones we're talking about. We've got 0 0.587 mole of ammonia, and we've got 0 0.625 mole of oxygen. So that's as far as we can go with the data that we've been given. Uh, where to next? Well, <laughs> I've given the game away by saying it's a limiting reagent problem. Uh, it, we know it's a limiting reagent problem because we're given the masses of both of our starting materials. So that's a dead giveaway for the fact that it is going to be a limiting reagent problem. So what have we got? We've got 10 grams, so that corresponds to 0 0.587 mole of ammonia and for oxygen, 0 0.625 mole of oxygen. Right, what do we do with this? Well, we now check and see if this is the correct mole ratio for the reaction between ammonia and oxygen. We need a four to five mole ratio. You know, just sort of eyeballing it, it looks kind of close. So how do we figure out whether it is the correct mole ratio or not? We divide these guys by the stoichiometric coefficients. Remember, we say that number of moles of ammonia divided by four should be equal to, in a perfect world, the number of moles of oxygen divided by five. So let's do that calculation. So therefore, the number of moles of ammonia, 
So 0 0.587 mole divided by 4 should be equal to uh, 0 0.625 mole divided by 5. Let's have a look at these numbers that come out when we do that. Um, we get 0 0.147 here, and that should be equal to 0 0.65 over 5, which is 0 0.125, and you can straight away see that they're not equal, and so we have ourselves a limiting reagent problem yet again. So just sort of reiterate, it is a limiting reagent problem because the mole ratio isn't correct. The mole ratio has to be 4 to 5. Doing this shows you that the mole ratio is not 4 to 5 because this is not equal to this, okay? So once we've shown that the mole ratio is not correct, we then need to identify the limiting reagent. The limiting reagent is the smaller of these two numbers. And so therefore, the limiting reagent in this case is going to be oxygen. That's your limiting reagent, okay? And that might kind of seem a little bit strange because we're saying we've got a larger number of moles of oxygen than we do have of ammonia. But yet, this guy's the limiting reagent. Think about that for a while. Hopefully, you will convince yourself that this is actually correct um, and that O2 does end up being the limiting reagent in this case. So once we have our limiting reagent, then we treat this like a <laughs> normal stoichiometry problem, if there is such a thing as a normal stoichiometry problem. And we base all of our calculations on oxygen only, okay? So we don't have to worry about ammonia in determining the amounts of products that we're going to get out of this because the amount of product that you get from this reaction is solely determined by the limiting reagent, the limiting reagent being oxygen in this case. Okay, so let's then go ahead and do our calculations. So the question asked what masses of NO and H2O could be formed from this particular mixture. We're now basing everything on the uh, amount of oxygen that we have. So let's look at the mole ratios uh, between oxygen and NO and oxygen and H2O. And so therefore, number of moles of O2 over 5 should equal the number of moles, or will equal in this case, the number of moles of NO over 4. So therefore, number of moles of NO that we are going to get from this is going to be four times the number of moles of O2 divided by five. Remember, you're multiplying uh, both of these by four to get rid of the four on the bottom here, okay? And making NO the subject. So therefore, number of moles of NO is going to be four times the number of moles of O2 over five, and that's going to be equal to uh, four times 0 0.625 divided by 5, and that then gives you 0 0.500 mole, okay? So that's the number of moles of NO that we should be getting out of this. So how do we get the mass? Well, again, once you've got an amount and you've got a molar mass, you can always get a mass, so therefore the mass of NO is going to be 0 0.500 multiplied by the molar mass of NO, 14.01 plus 16.00 grams per mole. Multiply that out, and the mass of NO that you're going to get, 15.0 grams. OK? So there's the answer to one part of the question. Pretty involved question this. We've got a lot of things to uh, actually work out here. So we've shown that from this mixture here, 10 grams of ammonia, 20 grams of oxygen, the maximum amount of NO that you can get, again, this assumes the reaction goes to completion, is 15.0 grams. So how do we do water? We, we do it in, again, an entirely analogous fashion. So for water, we say the number of moles of O2 
over 5 is equal to the number of moles of H2O over 6. So therefore, the number of moles of H2O that we can get out of this, multiply this through 6 times the number of moles of O2 divided by 5, and that equals 6 times 0 0.625 over 5 mole. And you do the calculation, and that is 0 0.750 mole of water. And again, the mass that that corresponds to, the mass is equal to the number of moles times the molar mass, which is equal to 0 0.750 moles multiplied by molar mass of water, 2 times 1.008 plus 16.00, and that then is going to give you 13.5 grams of water. So again, an entirely analogous method for calculating the mass of water that you can get out of this uh, to the way that we did it for the mass of NO. Now, the initial question had one final part, and it said what mass of which of these guys is going to remain at the end of the reaction? Because remember, this is a limiting reagent problem. And the limiting reagent gets used up completely, again, assuming the reaction goes to completion. So the limiting reagent gets used up completely, leaving some of the other reagent, the reagent that's in excess. So how do we figure out how much of which of these is going to be present when the reaction has gone all the way to completion? Um, and the answer to that is, well, we need to know the mole ratio for the reaction between ammonia and oxygen here. So we know that all of the oxygen has reacted. All 0.625 mole of oxygen has gone. So the question we then need to ask is, right, how much of this amount of ammonia did that react with as it reacted, okay? Because ammonia is the thing that's going to get left over. O2 is your limiting reagent. It's going to be all gone at the end of the reaction. Ammonia is the one that is going to be present. So, again, what have we got? We've got the number of moles of ammonia divided by 4 is going to be equal to the number of moles of O2 divided by 5. So therefore, what we want to know now is the number of moles of ammonia that have reacted with this particular number of moles of oxygen. So therefore, the number of moles or the amount of ammonia is going to be equal to 4 times the number of moles of O2 divided by 5. And that is going to be equal to 4 times 0 0.625 over 5, and that then equals 0 0.500 mole. Okay? So, that is the amount of ammonia that reacted with 0.625 moles of O2. That's the really important point here, okay? That's what we're trying to show here. How much, of the, how much of the ammonia has actually reacted with this number of moles of O2? Well, we've done the calculation and we've showed it's half a mole, 0 0.500 mole. So therefore, the number of moles of ammonia remaining at the end of the reaction is going to be what you had originally, which is 0 0.587 mole, subtracting or taking away the number of moles of ammonia that's actually reacted, which is 0 0.500, and that is equal to 0 0.087 mole of ammonia. So that's the amount of ammonia that we're going to have left over in this particular reaction, okay? O2 being the limiting reagent, reacted completely, it's left some ammonia, it's left that amount of ammonia. So what does that correspond to in terms of mass? Because again, that's what the question asked, what mass of which reactant is going to remain? So therefore the mass 
of ammonia that's remaining is going to be the amount, which is 0.087 moles multiplied by the molar mass. So 0.087 mole multiplied by the molar mass of ammonia, 14.01 plus 3 times 1.008 grams per mole. And if you multiply that out, then what you end up with is 1.48 grams of ammonia. I guess that's the sort of problem that you could reasonably expect in uh, a final exam, sort of a, a detailed stoichiometry problem, uh, limiting reagent and all of that sort of stuff. So what we've done, we've gone through, we said we start with 10 grams of ammonia, 20 grams of oxygen. Uh, once we do that and the reaction goes as far as it can go, then what we're going to get left over with in terms of the reactants is 1.48 grams of ammonia. There's a lot to take in in this particular calculation. Uh, I guess if you're not getting it first up, just rewind the video, go back, start again and work your way through it. Uh, and hopefully it will uh, make some sense. A lot of important concepts in this. So I hope you've learned uh, a little bit about limiting reagents today and we'll see you next time.